Hello, my name is Father Augustine Highlander, and I'm making a video for you because on my own schedule, I did not put Alaska time. So you can put that down to me being a little flaky. But I know myself, and I'm glad I can make this video. Technology has made it so far that I can put something or give something to you. Unfortunately, it won't be through Facebook Live, um, at least not live. So I'm uh, talking to you about the virtue of hope and the virtue of hope in this troubled time and looking specifically at the virtue through the lens of the evangelical councils. We've looked at poverty and we've seen that the virtue of hope um, is primarily a virtue that works through prayer and our poverty is one of poverty of language so we come before our God and we ask him for the words that we ourselves can speak and um, cry out to him in our poverty so that was the first one the second one is chastity chastity uh, doesn't take too much imagination with regards to what it is. But many people, and including many religious, have a, a limitation on what chastity is. Uh, chastity is, for many people, just a, a denial of a sexual experience or sexual experience with many people. Um, so we think of celibate chastity, which means the denial of sexual experience, period, uh, or uh, chastity within marriage, which means denial of sexual experience with any partners. Um, and the, we talk about monogamy that way. Um, but chastity not only uh, has a positive understanding and not only a negative one, but it fulfills itself in um, actually quite a few different ways um, and this is why we're going to be talking about hope because when we think about hope uh, many times we narrow the focus and we think all right I want heaven um, well that's kind of a narrow focus in two ways one way is it's narrow focus because it's just you well what about everyone else um, and then the other narrow focus is, well, it's my idea of heaven. Well, is that uh, an idea of heaven that other people have? Um, so uh, that narrowing has to broaden out. Actually, this, the, this uh, evangelical council will help us to broaden the experience of love, not narrow it. And chastity is the evangelical council that helps us to broaden our experiences, especially of love. But in doing so, we grow in hope too. So let's talk a little bit about this evangelical council then. Uh, chastity has both an interior uh, uh, look, gaze, uh, and exterior gaze. And I know what you're thinking. Um, well, why did I start with interior and not start with exterior because chastity involves me seeing or not seeing other things, right? No, no, no. The interior gaze means chastity allows us to hold on to our love. All right. So it allows us to know what we love. And that has to first be interior. If we are ch if we are not chased interiorly, then we're going to go after everything else and start looking here and there and, well, a lot of different places. So the chastity that we're talking about, this council, is an interior chastity first. Um, and it's then an exterior chastity, which then allows us to say, that I'm going to work out my chastity in works of love. Works of love for my neighbor and works of love for the poor. 
Now, in the interior chastity, then, we have to really know what to do with um, sin. I know this is a big discussion. What do I do with sin? Because when I think of hope, hope as a theological virtue can actually be so weighed down by sin that we despair. And the sins of the flesh, specifically lust, can be those sins that weigh us down the most, um, or at least become the most convenient ones to weigh us down. Or we also have sins of gluttony or avarice, but um, when we think about uh, these sins, they weigh us down. They cause us to go after different things. Um, so, what is it that we can do with sin? Because if we need, if we have hope, we need to know what to do with sin. So, here is an example um, of a uh, of someone that was that was told to me. Uh, an example of a young man who was having a horrible time with lust, with um, seeing things that he did not, that he knew weren't, that wasn't good, um, and he didn't want to see them anymore, but he kept going back to them over and over again, right? Pornography, lust of the eyes, and he didn't know what to do. So he went to Jesus on the cross, and he spoke to Jesus on the cross about this, and Jesus told him, I want you to give these sins to me. I want you to give these sins of lust to me, for I am naked and vulnerable, and I want to take all these sins to myself. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Our God hungers and thirsts for sin. He is the only one who can redeem us. But because of that, He's the only one that we can direct our sins towards. Not sinning to him, meaning sinning against him, but directing our sins towards him, meaning that I'm going to offer up my trials, temptations, venial sins, mortal sins, to you, Jesus, on the cross. And so he did this. And Jesus received his lust and gave him love. Now we see the transformation. We can do something with sin. We can still hope. And what can we do with sin? We can offer it to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our hope, even in the place of sin. But as I said before, our sins can, off, can look awfully narrow, focused, and very individual. So, this young man also noticed that too. And so, he also offered all of those people that he sinned against to our Lord Jesus Christ. All of those people that he was looking at with lust. Instead, not looking at them again, but looking at Jesus and offering those people to him. That's what he did. And then he heard the words of Christ. Prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven before you. And he was so happy. 
That is what we can do interiorly to be chaste. But it is a larger understanding of chastity, even interiorly, so that we can truly be hungry and thirsty for righteousness by offering Jesus, who hungers and thirsts for us, our sins. For we are poor, and we have little to offer. But if, he, but if we want hope, we have to offer Jesus our sin. Now, when we think about the exterior form of uh, this chastity, it's turning us from uh, lust, which is just looking at the surface, okay? Looking at the exterior into love which is friendship, which is relationship, which is really entering into a good for another. And that exterior will change us so that instead of lust, we now have love for neighbor. So chastity is conform converted into love. Now our hope then must be must change too. Instead of hope for ourselves, we now have hope for sinners. Us first, hope for sinners, but also hope for sinners by giving to the poor. And we can't, and I know this very, very strongly, we can't say, well, I only have so much. If we have God, we have enough. And we have enough for our daily bread. Now, we talked about this before. Our poverty uh, it tells us that we have enough um, for every single day. And I talked about the widow of Sidon who had enough just for the day. But we also have enough for others. And in considering the, enough for others, it doesn't have to be much. It just has to be something. So I have an example uh, from the news this summer that um, a tenor from the Seattle Opera decided to go out this summer outside his home and sing some beautiful arias for anyone who happened to walk by. That was a gift that he could give. He knew that he couldn't be in the opera. The opera was shut down. So he made his own home, his own front, front yard, his own porch into an opera house and saying to others. I know of another parishioner here at Blessed Sacrament who did the same thing with the violin. And she played wonderful uh, concerts on her front porch and also live streamed them on Facebook. I know of others who um, actually put things into their cars. So one friar, I was uh, reminded by one of the friars to put food into uh, your car um, and so that you always have something for the poor. If someone's on the side of the road, you always have something. And if you want, don't want to do that, you can at least maybe put some money in your car. You have it in a specific place, kind of like money that you would have for a toll. Well, you could also have money for the car, for the for the poor. If you have money for your car, then should you also have money for the poor in your car? That is one thing that you can try. We always have something to give. If we don't think that we have something to give, then we make God a liar. 
because he says, I always have something to give to you. And we're reminded of that uh, wonderful phrase from St. John. If we hate our brothers, then we make God a liar. And if we don't give to the poor, we also make God a liar. He supplies all of our needs and all of our wants. That is our hope. And we live that hope by giving to others. Now, this is going to be a very difficult, challenging time. The virtue of hope is something that doesn't um, happen naturally, um, and it doesn't happen regularly. Virtues, though, need to happen regularly. So I talked to you about prayer, and one way of growing in the virtue was to regularly pray, especially in the morning, but also in the evening. Well, it's also good to regularly give to the poor. But that regularity might be a little bit different. Part of the regularity could be that you always have something there in your car or on your person to give. And if you just give once to the first person who asks, then you've done the work of giving to the poor. You don't need to ask why someone is poor or why someone would want something. But you can ask, or I should say not ask, but you can say to them, so I was wondering if you might want something else. And you can offer prayer for them. Now that's a, another step, and, and that's quite a big step, uh, especially for some of our introverted friends, um, and I know I'm not the most extroverted person, um, but it is a big step to then ask um, and talk to the poor and say, is there something else, or can I pray for you? But I also think that it's important not to second-guess the poor. Not, it's important not to to um, pater be paternalistic. So that means only giving something that you know will be well used. We're not in charge of the gifts that we give. Just as God is not in charge of the gifts and talents he gives. So we have to be generous and without conditions, without stipulations. That is one of the hardest things for me, I do have to admit. I do want to give only to those who will use something well. I do want to give to only those who truly need it and are not trying to, to fool me or trick me. Um, but I can't be in charge of that. So I have to take a breath and still give. That's the virtue of hope. When I still do the virtue, when I still do the work, uh, even if I'm not in control of it, because I know I'm in control of what I can do, and so I still do it. Now, we were talking about the image of the boat, and we talked about poverty in the sense that we might just be on a plank, uh, that second plank of shipwreck, meaning uh, confession, um, but we'll still be above the waves. We might be tossed about, but we'll still know that God has lifted us above the waves of despair and doubt. This second image is that of an anchor. I had to read about anchors, and um, I'm still not quite sure about anchors myself, and don't give me an anchor, okay? Um, so if I'm on a boat, uh, give the anchor to someone who knows how to use it. Um, but I did read about anchors, and uh, found out that um, with an anchor, 
one of the most important things is where you set the anchor. It's not so important what the anchor looks like, or it is important, but it's not as important as where you set an anchor, because there can be many different um, varieties of, of terrain down below the ocean on which you're setting your anchor. Um, it could be um, rough gravel, um, which can really hook onto an anchor. It could be rocks, not the best because the rocks can move. Um, it could be vegetation, not the best because veg vegetation might not be able to sustain you or hold you. Um, it might be really thin sand and, and it just will not be able to set into um, the, the sand. It could be mud and then it sets into mud and then maybe you can hook a little bit below the mud. So I'm just giving you a lot of examples of what an anchor can, um, can do down below. Um, and what it can hook into. Um, but um, part of the anchor and, and making anchor, anchorage, <laughs> um, is to make sure the anchor is uh, taut and tight um, and to make sure that that, um, I think it's called road, is um, long enough. Maybe I think the idea was seven by one um, long enough so that you could actually get a good footing um, down down below and make sure that this is the key that you were making the anchor that road that rope or whatever it was that's holding the anchor really taut uh, for quite a long time so you're holding it not just for a little bit but you're holding it there for quite a long time just to make sure that what you've hooked you know what the anchor is, is where the anchor is placed um, is really placed there um, and not somewhere that might move because you don't want to set your anchor down go to sleep and then wake up somewhere else um, you want to know that um, where you set your anchor will be where the anchor will stay until you pull up the anchor um, and so sometimes you recommend you get another anchor and then you have two and um, you're really set or you have another anchor and another, another um, uh, variety of, of, um, of soil or, or terrain so the anchor can really, really hook on something. What's this all getting at? Okay, I know you're saying, well, get up, you know, move along. I know it about anchors. And so what are you talking about? Um, so what I'm talking about is if our anchor is in heaven, remember, hope is in the goal, the final good. Um, hope is attaining that hard good, or striving after that hard good, striving after the hard good, um, which is God, heaven, the goal, the end. So hope, um, that anchor, needs to be really set there and not anywhere else. That means it has to be tested. There's, there's no question about it. There's no sort of one little tug, oh, that's enough, and then going on your way. You really have to test how um, much your hope is in God, not just in things, people, or your feelings, or how you feel about people, or how you feel about things. Your hope has to be in God. And so you really have to hold that tight and really pull, okay? So that's why um, a charity to the poor really is key here, okay? You really have to do it, even if you don't want to. Um, now, I know, here's one thing. If you really think that someone is trying to pull the wool over your eyes, then try and... Um, just ask questions about uh, how their life is, okay? Um, if someone gets angry at you for asking questions, they're probably not going to um, use what you're going to give in the right way. Um, but if someone really has some issues, they're going to want to tell you, okay? Um, and you can try and catch someone on a tall tale, um, 
but that's only if you're an expert at this, okay? I was working with a, a wonderful a woman who was in charge of the St. Vincent de Paul, uh, where I was in Eugene, and she was very good at asking the right questions so that someone could really, uh, the people who needed help could really get help. Um, and so uh, if you need help, then work with the St. Vincent de Paul and um, know someone who knows how to ask the right questions. Um, please connect to your St. Vincent de Paul Society if you do not know how to give to the poor. If you don't know how to give, then learn how to give. That's your responsibility. You have what it takes to give. You have enough. And I gave you those examples of the different people who found ways to give. But if you don't know how to do it, then find the same visit to Paul Society or an appropriate group that gives to the poor and be part of it. Don't just give to them, although that's also necessary, um, but also be part of it. Be part of that gift because it's a lot larger than you. And again, part of hope is to expand whether you are both your understanding of God and also um, the really understanding for everyone of God and uh, understanding of heaven. So your hope will expand you. Um, that's why I'm talking about the Evangelical Council of Chastity today. I wish you all the best. Um, I'm praying for all of you. And um, do not put your trust in anything but God. Jesus, I trust in you. Remember that prayer and hold it dearly. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Peace.